Um, so did I put the motion after that or not? No, I didn't. I'll put the motion then, please. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Hence, carry. Thank you. Okay, so we now move down to our annual plan reports. So, just waiting for the team to arrive. Sorry, question here. Well, more point again of statements here. Um, I think yesterday basically was something that I helped pursue quite solidly in, in a debate and, and so on that went on. And a good part of that was, yes, I was supporting it, but I actually am so tired of people coming into this chamber with their residential or their, their place of residence hat on. It's time that we realise that our oath is to the district to do our best for our people in our district and to stop being so parochial but it was a good example of what happens when you push a parochial point. And I just feel, sir, that I want us to think a little harder as we go through this process today, that we are looking at what we do as a district. Well, I think there's a good lesson for us all, if I could respond in that uh, it was a report that was, while well, you might think there were elements of par parochialism, it hadn't been well thought out, and was presented without, uh, I think, as the mayor made some comments that were circulated, the, the value of having workshops first to figure out what the general view might be. And so I think there's a lesson for us all in that, as you say. Anyway, we want to move on with today's business. So, um, Matt, do you wish to open it up for us, please? Sounds good. Good afternoon, councillors and mayor. Um, we're here to talk about today, the annual plan issues and options report. So this is the annual plan that looks at next year's budget. So that's from 1 July 2023. So this is currently here to 1 uh, 30th of June 2024. And that's the focus. So that's year three of the last LTP. Um, we will be coming back to yourselves later this year to start doing the work on the long-term plan 2024-2034, which does a lot more stuff in detail, has a financial strategy in detail, infrastructure strategy, and looks at our levels of service through that process. So the annual plan, we're looking at what will the budgets be over the next financial year. As part of that, this isn't the first cut of the budgets. We've gone through a process to develop what the capital program and the operational program would be and present some issues and options papers of the major matters that we're seeking direction on and also the capital program and operational program as well for, the, for approval. This will then feed into the development of the consultation document and the supporting information which will be asked to adopt full consultation at your next meeting in March. Um, most of the issues are there. We can go through them one by one. I'm happy to answer questions. We've got the GMs able to answer questions on the specific areas of interest and finance are here as well for financial questions. But happy to hand over to yourself, John. Thank you, Matt. So if there's nothing further, we can uh, move right into it. So the first recommendation there is that the uh, senior policy analyst report be received and that it's considered to be of medium significance in terms of council's significant and engagement policy. So if I take that for a start, is there a mover? Councillor Granger, Councillor Murray Benj, all in favour, please say aye. Against? Carry. Right. And so then uh, we move on down into the other items that uh, the matters of consequence that come from that. So the first one, um, Dave Hume, Paul Liner and Bulkhead. As we go through the financial update, it talks about the 4%. 
we have that as a, a commitment and we don't want to breach it. So then I go back to what we're doing today and there's sort of no relationship between what's in front of us and what our philosophy is at this stage. Could someone please clarify that for me? The 4% was set to the financial strategy that you adopted through the last LTP. Um, so yeah. that was adopted in July 2020, June, sorry, 2021. That was based on a set of assumptions around the economic environment, how our growth was going to pan out, how COVID-19 was going to play out, and the interest rates. The reality that we find ourselves in now is vastly different from what we projected and based our financials on at that point. That has meant that cost increases have been seen across the board and in every sector of New Zealand society have fallen through into council's workload as well. So the things that we provide, the pipes, the labour, the bitumen, has all gone up in price. And that has meant that the capital program prices, our operational prices, have increased as well. So the reality of hitting a 4% target in this uh, economic environment is um, near impossible to be, to be realistic without significant levels of service change, or which would uh, result in a long-term plan amendment. If we could go back to that, please, if we just, and um, I might need your help, Matt, but um, if we continued with the assumptions from the LTP, I think we were looking at a rate increase in the order of 20%, is that correct? Or somewhere close to that? Go, but go back and to December. Can I ask Mr. Ellis, are you able to help us there? Yeah, the, the initial figures that before they were vetted were over 20%. Yes. And then they came down to about 12, and then they've been reduced since then. Yeah, so, so that, that's the context and, and answer to Councillor Murray Ben, it was totally unachievable to achieve 4%. Council staff did a lot of work prior to December and came back with that figure of around 12%. And, and then they've done some more work before our workshop um, last week or whenever it was, where, where they brought forward the 7.41 proposal. And today, we're working through these and uh, decide where we land and how far apart from that. Mr Chairman, it's just that I listened to the Reserve Bank Governor today and we've got an inflation rate sitting at 7% and he's saying that um, he can do his bit and local and central government have got to do their bit and hold prices as best we can in order to get down inflation. So I think we should tuck that away the back of our minds yep, at the yep. same time. So in essence, what we've been doing to balance our budget by bringing them over 20% back to 75 at this stage um, is, is a big step in that direction. Obviously, it's not the driver has not been to support the governor of the Reserve Bank, but to be what's practical for our council. Councillor Joyce. I very much appreciate what the staff have done. Um, and I realise it's really, really difficult to get much lower than this. I do think um, we have more work to do. I, I think we can go further than the issues and options paper today allows. Um, I've been right through the spreadsheets myself that we received a few days ago, and I've got a lot of queries. And I call them queries because I'm new, um, and I'm not saying we're achievable, but I think there are some issues and options we can put up, and I'd like to see if there's a process for that. But to well, do that, um, we need to also know with an appetite around the council table for that. Yeah. And the reason for my doing this, of course, is that we are in a cost auditing crisis. You know, um, Food inflation's up around 10, 11%. Uh, mortgages are going through the roof. You know, about half of our population with mortgages face major changes this year. Um, if they're coming off the low interest rates of two years ago. And we've had some data with the help of Councillor Coxhead talking about the extra costs that typical Western Bay of Plenty people will face. You know, extra $200, $300 a week in interest costs on their mortgage. Um, I understand it's a very tough budget. Um, the council 
is facing the same cost pressures as our, our ratepayers and residents. And it is our residents because the landlords of people renting will also face these cost pressures. Um, you know, the Kiwi Fred industry has got problems as well. I do think we want to go, I would like to go further than what the issues and options paper allows today. And I would like to come out of this meeting with some way of trying that. Uh, I'm not saying we should do it today because it's too difficult. Yeah. I would just add to that that uh, you're quite right. We can't do all that today, but you must bear in mind that we're not setting the rates today. We're setting a draft budget to take and talk to the community. And so when we come back, depending on feedback from the community is, we can um, take that on board then. I guess my point is I'd like to see an additional step before it goes out to the community to see if we can travel a bit more often. Yes, I've heard your point. Councillor Denia. Um, Mayor Dean, you're sorry. I'm having a bad day. Yeah. So while, while I hear Rodney's point, I'd perhaps like to ask staff at this point what the um, capacity is to do that, because we are a fair way through the process at this point. We are in a statutory process. We must adopt by a certain period, and, and working back from that, we don't actually have a lot of time. And so I, I query whether... Um, there is actually any time to do that, but maybe maybe staff can comment on that. You're right, it is difficult for us to be able to, um, the time pressures that we're putting on ourselves now are becoming very tight. Um, as we have discussed, we are looking at going out to consult for a calendar month, um, which means that for us to adopt in June and to be able for you to all have sufficient time to be able to, consider the submissions that we receive through that period, for, you, for any changes to be made through that period, you need time and staff need time to be able to write sufficient information for you guys at that period. If we push out our adoption of the consultation document at the end of March, which is currently scheduled, we are pushing those timeframes at the back end to adopt to be extremely tight, um, which it's becoming slightly unfeasible. Um, to push it in any further. If we do that, we run the risk of not being able to adopt an annual plan by the end of June. That's the risk we, we, we run by pushing dates out further. So I think it's also worth oh, adding to that that we have asked staff to find the savings and options that we want to, to do to, to now add extra ones I think it's 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 verging on it inappropriate, but um, you, you can't you can't keep. I hear the side, Rodney, but sending out emails late last night saying new ideas for today's meeting. I I don't think that's appropriate at all. You're new to, new to this process, and there is a it is a complex timetable to get through, and and last minute additions are not where good governance comes from. I'm not going to ask you to respond now, Councillor. All right. Well, I'm sorry, I did not put out any new ideas last night. And I resent that because I did not. In fact, all I did was put a couple of facts in front of people. I did not put any proposal in front of anybody last night. I would also remind people that the detailed information we've been seeking since December arrived in our laps about a week ago. So I'm sorry if you're worried about timing then don't blame the councillors when we got the information a week ago. Come back to Councillor Coxie. Um, just just um, exactly what Rodney said. Um, look, I realise it's stressful and, you know, we are putting extra pressure on you, so I appreciate your situation. However, I think the... I feel like also in a week a whole lot's changed and we've also got our growers locally who are facing a very bad year and I just feel like not only are we going through a crisis people's backs are going to be against the wall and there's an awful lot of pressure on, a, on us from the community to stick to the four percent and achievable or not I think if we could just try our hardest because I, I think it's more than a cost of living crisis now I think it's going to be dire. Just one more councillor soul and then I'll um, but I, would, I do want to move on and, and move through because we're almost preempting the discussion in one sense before we've considered these matters. But councillor soul, 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, basically, I just want to mention that I've got a little bit of a, a, a graph in front of me, and um, our, our LTP figure when the uh, annual plan was done, 2131, for 2024 is 4.02. So where did all that extra percentage come from that the staff cut out? Inflation, basically, but I'll go to um, Rachel to... Thank you, Chair John. I, I wasn't proposing to respond to um, Councillor Sol's comment because I do think the um, explanatory... The explanation was given by Matt and has been offered in previous workshops. Um, but just um, as we head into the issues and options paper considerations, I just want to remind councillors that um, whilst I understand the emphasis around a cost of living crisis that faces us right now, that cost of living crisis is likely to be there next year and possibly the year after. So um, I understand that an annual plan is a one year view, um, but there are implications from decisions that are made today, potentially, or at a subsequent workshop, if we determine that we're going to do that, that will have a ripple effect and make your job harder, significantly harder in the out years. So that's just something to bear in mind when we're having these conversations. And I do appreciate the context with, within which we are operating and the pressure that you are getting from community. The last comment I want to make is that we have statutory obligations to deliver. And um, it has been said before that we can't even stand still at 4%. And, and I'll just add to that perhaps that those that were around uh, three years ago when COVID first hit us and we cut a couple of percent off the rate increase then and uh, it really bit us on the backside when we fronted up the following year for the next round. So just remember that. Did want to get going, but Mayor Nina. I'll be sure. I'll put it more bluntly than, than Rachel. If if we screw down too tight in this process, you're going to be double digits next year. And I don't want that. Okay. Right. We, on, please, we want to proceed. Um, so we'll get into these issues and options before us. Um, I was starting to say, first one before us, Dave Hume, Paul Liner, and Bulkhead. So we, we talked about these all last week, but do you wish to add any more, um, Matt, or are we just uh, considering the options? No, I'm, I'm happy to take it as read, but uh, Gary's on hand, on the sidelines, ready to answer your questions yep. on these ones. So no further questions. It was thrashed out. Uh, Rodney, because the workshops are behind closed doors and we haven't actually explained to people what we've done. So if you look at the numbers there, um, there was going to be a hard thing from memory, and correct me if I'm wrong, 178,000 coming from rates. We've moved that to general rate reserves. So that's a saving to the rate payer this year that we um, have through the staff and council achieved on rates this year. And I think, you know, it's all right to say we dealt with it at the workshop, but we've got, the public don't know that. So I would suggest that it is probably worth, a, you know, a couple of lines of briefing on each one as we go through, just to explain a bit of the background, because the public aren't at the workshops. That the um, IOPs should stand on themselves, yeah. provide that background. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, the other thing is that, um, you yeah, know, we did look at painting, but actually painting, if we'd have to do it, we'd have to do it again. So that's in the IOP report. But I mean, the, the change in funding from current year rates to general rate reserve um, is what makes this possible in my mind. Thank you, Rodney. So um, no further questions. We have someone want to move one way or the other. Mayor Denya. I'm happy to move option one, please. We have a seconder. Councillor Murray Benge. Okay, any other speakers? Right, go for it. Are you speaking first? You right. speak first. I think um, one of the good things that will happen this year is that we go out to the public and the public will actually tell us whether or not they're satisfied with this policy, this proposal, and if not, they'll tell us where we want they want us to cut it. So I'm dependent here on 
the community like the Western Ward ratepayers who do their research thoroughly to actually have an opinion on this. Can that hold off or will this be acceptable to the community? So, sir, I'm happy for option one to go out to the community in our draft policy. Oh, okay, thank you. Go to Councillor Henry, please. Um, as we've got another item that's re re related to Dave Hume Pool, and you wanted to have, a, Rodney wanted us to have a bit of a talk about what we discussed. This was considered about dropping, but in the in in um, the discussion that we had, seeing we're looking at um, putting a cover over it, that this was worth this was worthwhile doing this work because it could be done before the cover was on and then we would get a longer life out of the pool for the next 20 years without having to do anything. So this is a reason that I am supporting this today because it makes prudent sense to carry ahead with this work before the roof goes on. Thank you. Any others? Sorry, Councillor Joyce. So just a query in the IOP. It says other loans 178. Is that correct? Or is it should be rates reserve 178? It seems to be just an internal conflict, a typo perhaps, or am I reading it wrong? Others possible. But I thought it was rates reserve. Which page are you on? Uh, yeah, no. Page 18, if that's helpful. Just the table at the bottom there. It just could be a typo or it could be me reading it wrong. Either. I can show you math if it's easier. <laughs> can I just step around and show them? <laughs> no, it, it, it should say general rate reserve. There was. Yes, we were okay. changing stuff, we just didn't quite get everything. So we've clarified that. So it's clear to everybody that 178 is from the general rate reserve. Right, Councillor Sol? Yes, sir, I will support this as well on that basis and um, I wish them luck. They worked very hard to contribute to this and a very sizable sum of money. And it's one time where I feel it's worth pursuing further and, and making it happen. Thank you. Okay, I think we've exhausted the speakers, so I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. All right, if we move to the second item, which is the related item of the pool roofing project. Um, if I missed something... Do we not need to come up with some words for the oh, decision on the reason? We want to do that as you go. I, could it be helpful to do the second one? Because if that's approved, that they're related topics then and there's um, the commentary could be slightly different to what it might be if you consider them as standalone things. Councillor Murray Benj. Do, sir. <coughs> Well, it's been moved. Option two. Um, do we have a second up? It's page twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. I'm not finding a seconder. Oh, sorry. And you've you've seconded that. Hang on a minute. I just want to be sure. And yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I think, mm -hmm. sir, the first um, debate that we had on the first option clarified as to how much we were prepared to commit to this Dave Hume pool. And I think people in the community will be satisfied and know that the roofing can go on at a later date. The grapevine tells me that the heating is really good in this pool as well. 
and uh, people enjoy it. And I'm quite sure that what we've done or recommending uh, is a long way to actually improving what's there. But I don't think this is the time to put a roof on. We've had some oh. earlier comment, but um, if I go first to Mr. Ellis. Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to clarify because Councillor Murray Benj is speaking in favour of the um, funding, but option two declines the funding. So option one is oh. if you're speaking in favour of it, then it's option one. Oh. Yeah, I, I thought she was speaking against the, the project. No, sir. Oh. Then well, I clarified it was a dumb motion. I, I, thought she, uh, I thought she was speaking for it. So if she's not speaking for it, I don't second it. <laughs> okay. So I, right. shall, I shall move well, option one. So we better go back a step. I so move option please, one. Please, Council May Benz, you moved option one rather than option two. Is that what you wish yeah. to do? Okay. So, so I second it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Councillor Joyce. So this is one that I've had difficulty with in the past, but I can see that the community has done a lot of work on this. They've done their part. And I'm particularly impressed that when the cost went up, they didn't, um, they actually stumped up the, you know, their extra share as well, which I, I don't, from memory was not part of the initial conversation, but they've gone out there and done it. Um, we have managed to avoid um, the rates cost, again, by rating the reserves to keep the rates down. Um, that makes it a bit more palatable to me. Um, so that I'm speaking in support of this. Okay, do we, Councillor Sol? Basically, sir, just so I support the uh, way it's being put forward at this point. Okay, if there's no further speakers, I'm going to put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carry. So now, um, in terms of the wording you wanted to put around those, uh, I think uh, there'll be something around the fact that they uh, are good projects to work in tandem. That is, has been highlighted by the speakers. The community has worked very hard to raise outside funding and, and uh, supplement the council contribution, which has, as in both cases, come from the reserve um, rating fund and not impacted immediately on rates. So is there any other points that you want made there? Councillor Joyce. Just a bit about from the, the, the lining, that longer term, it should be a saving rather than repeatedly painting yes. it. I yes, think that's valid an important point, point as well. So we captured those points. Mr Chair, just a reminder that a good starting point for your reasons actually comes from the advantages um, the advantages box than the option that you choose. Mm. Right. Can, uh, Mayor Denia? Can I, can I maybe interpret Rachel's comments as when we come to the decisions rationale that we'd start with advantages and if anyone, anyone wants to change them, we can, but let's go with advantages first and save ourselves a fair bit of time, I suspect. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on to the third IOP. Yes. And this one covers the Tapuki Makatu Reserve Management Plan projects, specifically Spencer Ave and Midway Park. Um, the recommended option is option, sorry, I'm just scrolling down, option one. Um, these are projects that we've consulted on through the Reserve Management Plan project previously. And we're looking to have budget to implement what was agreed with the community at that point. Councillor Murray Beans, were you? Yes, sir. I can support this project when I look at its 80% loan. And I think with something that's a long term benefit. Uh, when we do the work on reserve management plans, it's got a benefit for people over a long period of time, and the FINCOs are there as well. Uh, can we actually have confidence that uh, these figures will be true if we go for option one? I, I, I'll direct that question to 
to Gary Alice. The, the figures will be what we spend. <laughs> the figures are what we're planning to spend. When you get to the detailed design, it might always change slightly, but um, our aim and, and the direction you set is to meet those figures. So we match the project to the figures. Councillor Joyce. A question. Um, these are quite small sums to go into a loan. And as my understanding is that loans should be for large sort of multi-generational projects. Um, is there room in the FinCo budget? And this is why I was asking to see what money's in there. Uh, a couple of them yesterday. Is there room in the FinCo budget to do these relatively small sums from FinCo's? Right, I'll come to uh, Rachel. Are you prepared to answer? I was just, it might be a tandem, Mr. Chair, between Gary and I, but I think the first comment I want to make is that your decision, the decisions around you've split between funding sources and particularly FinCo's, has to be sustained by growth. Mm -hmm. So there has to be demonstrable growth to, to fully fund this 100% from FinCo's, and I'm, I'm, our growth projections in Pukahina wouldn't sustain that. Okay, so we'll probably, I don't think we need any further comment unless you wish to, Mr. Ellis. So there's the answer to your question. So um, any, no other questions? So I'm looking for a mover again then, please. Councillor Crawford, which option? Oh, sorry, option one. Thank you, do we have a seconder? Councillor Wickers? Speakers, Councillor Amir Denya. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm in favour of, of including these, these projects. Uh, I was there at the consultation. There was a clear community desire. And I think it's important that when we, we do our reserve management plan that we actually show there's some implementation behind that. So I'll be voting in favour. Councillor Murray Binge. Taking a district-wide approach, sir, I can see the benefit of actually developing something that people will get pleasure from, and I think it's a worthwhile project to pursue. See no further hands, so if there's no other speakers, I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Against? Sorry, Ian, I wasn't watching you. Okay, we got the thumbs up. We can understand that language anyway. Um, You've got all the advantages there. Thank you. So just give you a moment. You don't want to add. Nobody's got anything they wish to add to that. Right, moving on then. Uh, Arrow, Arrow Road. Arrow Road. This is a project that puts a, a budget in the annual plan to allow for implementation of a concept plan, should that be resolved to be progressed, um, to be delivered for Arrow Road. The recommended option was option one, which is the council approve a budget of $55,000 through the annual plan for the implementation of the neighbourhood reserve elements of a draft concept plan. Council Murray Binge. I feel quite strongly about this one, Mr. Chairman, and I'm moving option two and happy to speak to it. It's been seconded, um, Councillor Sol. So uh, this, this particular project has got conflict with it. You've got the end of a road, a road where you don't normally put playgrounds, and what you've got is next door where a huge proposal is going ahead. And I thought it was unfair of Mrs. Davies to say at the last meeting, well, that's a resource consent and it could take a long time. One of the great things about this council is the need to improve how we do our resource management and to actually speed it up so that in fact, people can, who are spending a truckload of money are actually heard and we actually support the process through where they're going to build a playground, they're going to build the pathways. And so I'm adamant that this is something that 
if you are going to do anything with it, we should have a site inspection before, in fact, we make any decision. But I'm, I'm happy with option two, sir. And as I said, I feel strong about this. I'm going to say something then because, um, yes, there is a development proposed uh, nearby, but it's not confirmed that it's going ahead by any stretch. And uh, while I wasn't here the other day when Ms. Davey spoke to you, um, and so I'm not privy to what she said, uh, I mean, it would take, you would expect probably several years to come to fruition in the normal course of events, even if it is approved. So um, this is really a small sum of money to assist a group of people who are reasonably isolated in the sense that they have a main, they're confined by a main road and to enhance the uh, piece of paper road that they're using currently. So um, I'm speaking against the motion. So are there any other speakers? Oh, sorry, Councillor Sol. Yes, sir. No, I uh, support the motion basically on the same terms, that there is a uh, development plan there, quite a huge one, um, certainly. It's uh, been well sorted in many ways. The staff may know more about where that, well, will know more than I do, perhaps, as to where our council sits within that, um, that, that uh, development. But um, I believe it's relatively ready to move the moment they can get their plans sorted. And as though given some sort of idea that it uh, was six to nine months, I gather, and it was lodged pre-Christmas, it's not that far away, hopefully, from being processed further and uh, would save the council quite a reasonable sum of money, just the same. If I just make one clarification in terms of a huge development, I think it will roughly double the size of the community that is there. But I'm just going to go to Rachel again to clarify some of the points around that. Thank you, Mr Chair. And it's, this is not an appropriate setting to be discussing something that is in a regulatory process. But I just want to make one point of clarification um, and reference to the comments I made the other day, and that is that this is not a resource consent process. It is a private plan change. So for those of our qualified, um, uh, our commissioners sitting around this table who will, will clearly understand what is involved with a private plan change, it is of much greater scale than a resource consent process, and it follows the statutory um, requirements of Schedule 1 to the Resource Management Act. So the comments that I made around the time that these things take are dictated by the legislation. It is not a resource consent. Mayor Denya wish to speak. I, I want to speak against the motion. Um, I believe that this neighbourhood reserve is a pretty low cost way to provide something that the vast majority of the residents strongly wanted. I think it's 80 or 90 percent of the um, uh, the people wanted there, which is pretty high in, as these things go. Um, we've gone through quite a few um, drafts of the concept plan and um, there seems to be a degree of comfort with that. So I, I wish to um, provide facilities for the uh, for the young people and, and children in that isolated uh, location. Thank you. Councillor Joyce? Can I ask a question? And hopefully, Rachel, this one's for you, just to give you a warning, heads up. Um, so in the previous discussion, we weren't keen to use FinCos, and I understand the reason for that, because no development was likely to pay for those. Here, uh, we had a different situation, because there is a development planned, and while obviously it's in a statutory process and we can't double-guess that, but is there, could we put this 33,000 from rates, this one, into FinCos, given that there is a definite plan, at least, to... Um, do something there. Through you, Mr Chair, I, I would caution against that because we're not in a position to um, confirm whether or not that community will grow. As I said earlier, um, not only does it, has to, does it have to be tested against our district plan provisions, but equally against the requirements of regional plans and the regional policy statement and smart growth. So there are quite a few, not to mention 
um, the position of Waka Kotahi in relation to the state highway intersection. So there are, I am not in a position to give even any level of comfort, nor would it be appropriate around whether or not there is going to be growth in the Arawa Road area. Do you have supplementary? Yeah, just that we're already charging 40% to FinCo, so we must have some belief that there's going to be FinCo's to pay for at least part of this. Um, okay, Councillor Crawford. Um, in consideration of the location where this is, just talking with some people, um, has it been considered about the hazard, hazardness of um, the activity, farm activity and spraying? And also that's uh, sort of like an end of a, like a paper road that's quite narrow. And, you know, talking about the future of maybe a connection or cycle walkway and that kind of thing. I just heard, um, just from talking to some people in the community, there were concerns about the width of that bit of land where the playground's going, those things, and also the hazards that are surrounding it. it, it I could comment and others maybe want to add, but I'm in uh, the current, fence is not on the boundary so it's wider than it might appear currently and and because this is not a large scale park or playground it's quite basic I mean I think my view is there's quite sufficient room for it there but Matt wanted to comment. But can I just provide some clarification so this IOP is about putting the budget in to allow for delivery of concept plans should that be the direction 7th of March there is an item coming up to look at the concept plan in a bit more detail and how council would wish to respond to that, that concept plan and answer some of those questions. So I just know we're going down a bit more detail than we perhaps need to at this point, but 7th of March, there will be a report coming up on the concept plan for our road. So just a moment, Andy. Um, Rachel, did you want to comment further on that or? No, yeah, council Wickers in. Uh, so just from that, so if we sort of agree to put this into a the budget and then the process happens and then it becomes like, oh, that's probably not a good idea, it can be backtracked at that point? Yes, it, it could be. Yeah, um, You'd have to pass a resolution at that meeting requesting that the annual planning committee do so, but um, it, it is a possibility. But yeah. Rachel. And just to add to that, uh, Chair John, it is a possibility. But bear in mind that this that this particular um, this particular proposal that's in front of you, not so much the funding, but the the proposal around Arawa Road, has been workshopped on several occasions now. Has been the subject of a war, a ward reserve management plan process, and has received significant feedback from community. So uh, it's it's well advanced in terms of the elected member discussion around it, um, and the community expectations that have have evolved from us going out to them, talking to them, um, and subsequently developing a concept plan with them. Okay, Councillor Granger. I feel that the um, argument that we've talked to the community and therefore we have to do something is um, a little bit specious. There's other reserve management plans and concept plans that have been sitting on the books for six years that haven't gone anywhere. But that said, it's um, 33,000 on the rates, which is 0.04 of a percent. And we're wasting an awful lot of time on 0.04 of a percent. Thank you, Councillor Daly. I uh, just like clarification, Matt, your comment that this money was to develop the concept plan further. I understand it's to actually... No, to, to allow for implementation, implementation. should the concept yeah. plan be approved by the committee. Yeah, so the 55000 is to actually build these components for this little playground. Correct. Yeah, so I've supported this all the way through the, the design, the concept process, um, the process of approving the concept, the um, going out for consultation and then the implementation of the concept. So I, I have to continue going down that track, even though it's um, giving us, we've got this current cost of living crisis and we're trying to save a few months, a few bit here and there. And, um, and like John said, I don't think there's any certainty around when the local developer will actually build a playground and, and cycleway. And um, 
So I've, I've got to uh, oppose this motion on that basis and um, certainly advocate on behalf of little communities like this that get very little um, return on their rates. Okay, thank you. We've done the rounds. I apply, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I, uh, I haven't changed my mind. Uh, this is the, of course, it's a piddling amount, but at the same time, over on our overall budget, but at the same time, it's people's lives that are really, and the planning for people's lives in that community that is at, at uh, the issue. And one of the things that's come up is that the road is narrow and we're going to put a playground on the end of a paper road and on a narrow bit with ditches either the side, we're then going to take away mm -hmm. the right of the owner to use his paper road, which he's got a license to occupy. And it was he who cleaned it up and opened it up for anybody in the community to use. They will require his ability to do a subdivision in order to get the cycleway through his property. So it's and an I, issue have, there. I have to call you to, because as far as my understanding of this, I accept I was not at the workshop the other day, it is, what you're saying is totally incorrect. I think I should go to Mr. Ellis. While it may use a piece of the paper road, it is incorrect to say that there are drains alongside the, oh, the top road. end, the piece that will be used. And as I understand it, the landowner with the license to occupy will continue to be able to use the most of the paper road for the purposes required. Is that correct, Mr. Ellis? That's correct. So as you, where the fence is not on the boundary, so there's several metres to be reclaimed. And um, the plan is that the grazing licence has been relinquished. So you've already talked about that in the past. And the um, landowner will be able to use the paper road for access, vehicle access, because that's as right as a paper road, and to cross his cattle across, not down, but across at his current crossing point. And in terms of the access from there onwards, there is significant public land along the banks of the stream or drain, and that is currently grazed but is not owned by the landowner. Okay, so um, having corrected that, are you satisfied you had opportunity to make your right of reply, Councillor? Okay, I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against? No. It was option two and it has been lost. Okay, we can do that. Point of order, do we have to move option one now or is it that by default? Yes, we're allowed, I'm assured we're allowed to move that. So if there is a mover or a seconder. Happy to move. Councillor, so. all right. Uh, Mayor Daniel, Councillor Bally. So I'm not sure we need to repeat the arguments for and against. So um, uh, yeah, I, I think we've done the rounds pretty thoroughly. Um, Councillor Joyce. Can I move an amendment? That the you can. The funding be changed from rates to rates reserved for the 33,000. I mean, the rates reserve has gone up by a million dollars in the last two years. Um, so I think there is room for small sums such as this. It is, as Murray points out, a small chip on the shoulder of the rates increase. But, you know, many small moves will make something more substantial. And I don't think it will hurt the rates reserve too much. Of course, I'd need a seconder. So... All right, so it's been moved um, by Councillor Joyce that instead of, uh, or, or that we approve the option one, but change the funding stream to the rates reserve account. So is there a seconder? Councillor Sol? So that's now the motion before us. He's not allowed to. Okay, good point. Thank you for reminding me. Is there someone else that wants to second it? All right, I will second it. 
and we'll see are there, is there anyone wishes to speak to it? Councillor Daly. Uh, yes, sorry. I, haven't, I know we haven't got to this point really, but um, I, I was in favour generally of increasing our usage of the general rate reserve to keep the rates down uh, through this annual planning process. So I'm supportive of um, what Rodney's proposed. Any other speakers? All right. I'll put the amendment. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? No. I declare it ca carried. So it becomes now the motion. So I'll now put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? I declare it carried. So that was Council Councillor Murray Benj voted against that still. So you're satisfied with the comments there under advantages? Oh yeah, I think Ronnie's about to say we need to add one, which would be about using <laughs> the rate reserve to reduce the um impact the, rates. The rates impact. Thank you. <laughs> I assume that's what you wanted to say, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to Wilson Park. Um, Wilson Park issues an options paper, covers the implementation of a concept plan for Wilson Park and Waihee Beach. Again, this was something that we consulted on with the community. It's gone through a couple of iterations, and this one has received support and was signed off by council uh, late last year. The preferred option, or the recommended option, sorry, is option one, the council approves a budget of $410,000 in the annual plan for implementation of the Wilson Park concept plan. Okay, thank you, Matt. Rodney. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, option one has been moved. Council Joyce, do we have a second? Mayor Daniel? No questions? Speakers then? I think, from, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I sometimes get confused with all these numbers flying around, but this was another one that was going to be rates funded originally, and I think we found other sourcing of funds. Is that correct? Um, and yeah, I think that that's a good compromise. If we could just go to Mr. Ellis to comment, please. Yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman. Originally, it was the um, 246000 was general rate funded, but we readjusted that to fund out of the depreciation reserve. So that, that makes it much more palatable, and I'm sure Waihee Beach will be pleased to see some FinCos being spent locally. Okay, um, Mayor Daniel. Yeah, I'm supporting this one because this has been kicked around for 17 years. Um, you know, some people have been keen on deferment of things, or this, this has had its deferment in spades. So um, I'm keen, keen to support the, the final concept plan. It was, um, is relatively modest in the end. I mean, a, a fair cost, but it's been scaled back to what the community want. I think it's got good support now. And so, uh, yeah, in support of this. Councillor Sol. Yes, I will support this with the funding source being changed from directly from rates and um, Basically, sir, I just um, hope it goes through and I hope that the drainage issue at the northern end of the park gets tended to very promptly. Thank you. Okay. I'll put the motion then. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carry. And the advantages were there. Um, Nothing to add. I'm just sort of trying to quickly look at the advantages, but was Jane, Mayor James's point there that you know, the plan has been scaled back to what the community wants? And I think that's an important point to record. Yeah, you could add that it pretty much is covered anyway, but um, supports community aspirations and so on, but still we can add that in. Yep. Thank you. All right. Community Centre. 
So this issues an options paper covers the Tapuna Community Centre uh, and the use of the targeted rate for it. As you know, it was the committee have decided to demolish it due to maintenance issues and repair issues. This IOP seeks uh, the recommended option is option one that the temporary premises are put in place and the targeted rate is retained at its current level uh, until the future community facilities work is complete and implemented and that the targeted rate is used for either temporary or for future use. Hey, thank you. Councillor Coxey. Um, just a question, Matt. So that the um, community currently can't just use the existing Tapuna Hall for their meetings? rather than have um, port comms as I understand it, going down there? They can. I guess this is a, a more of a, a fluid one at the moment mm. because we are engaging with those user groups that use it around where they could um, actually use more feasibly and what their long-term ambitions are. Um, but if we continue the rate and it's not deemed that we don't need a temporary solution, then it can be used for future purposes um, as needed. But Gary may have more. Yes, that's correct. So the, the question about using the existing hall is about the location compared to the, the park and the facilities on the Marmatunga Park. Um, and as Matt said, it is a fluid situation that we know one of the groups is already contemplating with they try and acquire their own temporary building to go on there. So it's a I just go to current work in progress in terms of the options there, but the original option discussed with the uh, users was about temporary building to replace the one that's getting demolished and not of anywhere near the same scale, but a facility that includes, I guess, kitchen facilities and a small um, space that they can utilise. Yeah, it just seems to me that it's, um, you know, given that the other one's just up the road, it is the, the Tapuna Hall is an underutilised facility as it is. So, yeah, and a very good facility. Just seems that maybe we could save one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. No comment. All right, Councillor Murray Binge. If only uh, Councillor Coxhead was was hopeful in that, uh, but the tennis club, for example, can't have their facilities down at the Tabuna Hall, and it's really important that we acknowledge that the tennis club and the Lions Club are the ones who've maintained that building for a long period of time. And in the community uh, hall area, there's a, civil, not a civil defence, but a, a caddy caddy group running martial arts group for local kids. And it's been really most successful. And so they didn't want to see the building come down. It isn't the, but at the council did another engineer's report and there's certainly been plenty of them and the decision is to take it down so yes sir i think we need to continue with the um with the reserve funding for uh, asking for the support and the option one is the only one that i think is suitable for it but uh it's something that you really you can't the rugby club want to redevelop and they're on one side of the park, the others are on the opposite side, and to find a central place where they can all combine is a bollocks, and uh, they will need to have decent facilities, and they've got to work towards it. So I'm supportive of option one, Sue. Okay, I'll just go to Matt for a comment. Uh, I'd just like to add that there is a Tupuki, uh, sorry, Tapuna community facilities work underway, looking at both the the Scout Hall, the Rugby Club, the Tapuna Community Centre, the library, and also engaging with the hall as well, what the future facilities looks like in Maramatanga Park and in the Tapuna area generally. That's going to be an LTP conversation that we have. So I think that that's the, where this is, conversation has come from. So there will be time for this conversation and a more in-depth um, balancing Okay, so it's been moved, Councillor Murray Benj. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Granger? Yes, you may ask a question. So how much per property is the is the rate? Is it $65 per property? No. Sorry? Sorry, the total is 65000 and that would be collected over this rate. Okay, is it a flat rate or is it a... Um, a per property rate. Oh, how much? Flat, flat. How much? 
Forty-three dollars. Well, on. if it's sixty-five thousand and it was fifteen hundred odd properties, I mean, so it's about thirty-three dollars or so thereabouts. Okay. Mm. Okay. No further questions or speakers. So it's been moved and seconded. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. I've got a bit behind here, sorry. I'll ask another question. Well, this, bearing in mind it's affecting a small subset of the district, will this be formed part of the consultation for that part of the district? You know, we should give people a choice, basically. Do they want to keep paying the 43 or not? So this passing this option is allowed it to go into the annual plan. I would suggest that we ask the Tapuna people themselves, seeing as we're talking about 1,500 households. So that, will that, that that's be part of the consultation. A consultation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it, it's it's been done in other issues in other years. So I imagine that that's how that, it would be it, done. It's, it's not the intent through this annual plan to consult specifically on that, but we will be consulting on that topic along with the Tapuna community facilities as pre-consultation for that long-term plan. So it will be happening. Yeah. Councillor Thwaites. Wasn't going to comment, but just to put Councillor Joyce's um, mind at rest, the two halls in Tipuna that included is still less than an, um, at least three of the communities. You've got your list of hall rates. RRP is paying more. Oh, how Eddie's paying more. Tipuna's getting two for less than those ones. So if you're worried about what people are paying per property, look at Oh, how Eddie and RRP. Don't look at Tipuna. Okay. Okay, so there was nothing to add there in terms of the um, commentary. Okay, moving on then to the Tapuna Library. Um, this issues an options paper goes to the Tapuna Library. As you might know, the library has recently decided to fold. It has lost its premises in the school through recent redevelopments. They're in the process of transferring their assets over to the Tapuna Memorial Hall Society and having that conversation with them at this moment. So the preferred, the recommended option is option one, which is to reduce the Tapuna library targeted rate to zero for the, for the annual plan year, and then have the conversation as part of that wider Tapuna community facilities review that's ongoing at the moment. So you can have a, a more in-depth conversation around what the community needs are. Councillor Granger, do you have a question? I know. Oh, okay. Well, just a moment. Um, Councillor Coxey, did you have a question? Oh, yeah, so I've got a move. Were you wanting to too, were you? Yes, right, option M one, move one and second. Really logical. Yeah. Okay, so it's been moved and second, Coxey and Granger. Thank you. Councillor Murray Benj. Sir, I would like to that because the Tapuna Library was on a very good condition when it was gifted by the right, school, and it was in the school. And the school decided that they wanted rid of the building, so um, the library had to go at the same time. To put it at Maramatanga Park would be absolutely stupid, and to have it read the Tapuna Hall would make some degree of sense, but for most people, they would use the library either at Amokara or in the city, and which they do. And so having been a JP and on, on uh, service there once a month, uh, it was a miracle if anybody came in to actually get a library book. And so it hardly was well used. And so, sir, I think it should be removed. But no doubt uh, the people will have opinion during the uh, submission process. I thought that's what we were moving, to reduce it to zero while that process takes place. Am I correct, Matt? Yes, you, you, you're correct. There, there's no decision to be made on if the community wants a library service out there, what it would look like, where it would be. So that's part of this Tapuna community facilities conversation mm, we want to have. Just stop that, essentially. Yeah. So, so it's really, as Tracy summed it up, it's about stopping paying for now. So don't pay any more for now while those discussions take place. No, no, it's option one. And that has been moved and seconded by councillors Granger and Coxhead. We got it clear? 
Right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carry. Thank you. And, and so I'm quite sure that the, the rationale behind that is that to give time for those discussions to take place in the community should be added to the uh, advantage that's there. Okay, nothing further? Right, dealt with that page. Waihi Beach Library and Community Hub. My turn to speak this time. <laughs> uh, the Waihi Beach Community Centre and Hub is there are three options in front of you today in the issues and options paper. Uh, the recommended option is for the project to continue as planned and as amended by the council resolutions previously. Um, but what it means is that it gives the option to have a look around those review of the design, even though the location has been agreed. So it's basically also amended to include that funding comes from the general rate reserve for this portion of it. So it's not about bringing it forward, but simply dealing with the projected design and engineering at this point. Gary is here to answer any further questions about the ins and outs of this project, um, but that's the recommended option one. So are there any questions before we meet? Yeah, Councillor Granger? Oh, yes, thanks. Um, why does the um, district library rate not appear in any funding line for a library? Um, so the what happens is um, that when a new building is built, it's then um, the library rate pays a the interest charges or the repayment charges on any loans, and then and the um, operating cost of that building. So in this case, there's no repayment required until the project actually proceeds. Uh, so this project would in the future impact the library rate in terms of a repayment schedule. Thank you, Murray. Supplementary question. So does that explain why the library, district library rate jumped 48% in 2022? That would be one of the reasons. So when you think about the um, Caddy Caddy facility, uh, you've got a $2, $2 million loan sitting on that. So you've got that servicing that or repayment of that cost over 25 years. Plus, because it's a bigger facility, you're running costs are higher, both from um, OPEX plus, uh, if I remember rightly, there was an additional staff person um, into that library. So that all would add into the library rate. Good question. <laughs> yeah. So what, what can we expect the library rate to jump to when this one goes through? I mean, it's, it's, we're going to up $200 a property for what? Yeah. What? Yeah, per, no, per, per, per property. I mean, it's gone up seven, whatever percent, and now we're up to 119 a property. So, where will we go to? That would take it up to about 130 or just over. Yeah. So, Councillor Joyce. So, option 1.1 has a subsidiary clause in there through to building consent. All right. Does that mean we don't get another look at it? If we're approving it through the building, I said that seems a very long way down the process when we're we've actually asked to review the design and the costings. So why would we approve it through the building consent if we're still yet to see the revised plans and the costings? It just seems to be pushing it very much through the process. And can we, yeah. Um, so the the paper talks about um, reviewing the size and scope and um, facilities and what's included. And um, in terms of the timing, there's 15 months roughly from now through to the end of next, the financial year. Um, that's sufficient time to go through that review process to go through another concept design with an estimate to ensure that the council is satisfied or not satisfied or provide direction on that estimate. And only at that point would you go to detailed design and building consent. 
Um, and even the building consent at this stage, we're going, maybe we'd wait until you've given us direction in terms of the LTP as to the timing, because if the timing's not for three years, then we wouldn't go for building consent straight away. We just finished the concept design and the preliminary design. I think the critical comment from terms of your question was Mr. Ellis said, um, I've forgotten what he said now, but until we consulted with, I had direction from council. So they wouldn't be proceeding to apply for a building consent without having been directed to do so by council. Is that quite clear? Got that right, I think? I think my question is, why do we need it in there? If we're not actually going to use it, why don't we just take it out? Well, I think it's given the opportunity to use it if we want to. All right, Councillor Murray Ben, do you have a question too? No. Oh, good. I, well, we're ready to move then. Were you wanting to move? Option one. Option one. Have a mover. Seconded, Councillor uh, Mayor Denya. I'm trying to demote him all day. <laughs> 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 Got to watch my back now, do I? And I'll speak to it, Sue. You I'll may. I was horrified, absolutely horrified, when I saw the box that the library has, librarian has to work in. I think it's appalling. And I look at the growth that's happening in Waihe Beach, and we spent months and months and months going around in circles looking for a site when the community wanted the site that we've got now. And uh, so I, I'm happy that we should actually do something to let people know that we have an intention to actually build something in the future when, in fact, the economy is a little brighter. This will take it so far, sir. Thank you. Any other speakers, Mayor? I think Councillor Murray Benj expresses it very well. And I'll just add that uh, I'm pleased that the option 1.2 gives us the opportunity to review the design, building size, and external funding. I think the combination of those, the external funding and reviewing the, the size and, and design and so on can help us re reduce the costs and that would be um, appreciated by the community. I've seen your hand, Ross, but um, being a committee of council, I can't give you authority to speak. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Councillor Thwaite. Yeah, I won't be voting for this. I, I would support option three. It's not going to get there, but I don't support this. I would delay it. I heard Councillor Soule's plea earlier about parochialism. I come from part of the district that represents a quarter of the properties of our district. We have no access to pools, no access to libraries. We get no benefit at all from a town centre rate that everyone seemed to think $10 was so valuable yesterday. So I totally object to this and I won't be supporting it at all. We need to look, look at this again. If you look at our budget on libraries, we are well over $1.2 million ahead per annum compared to WIPA, an identical, um, that's before this project. So our whole library structure is going completely out of whack. And it's one area I don't support. And we need some major change to it because it is blowing out. This sort of grandiose building, we could put three or four um, sheds through through the um, rest of Conway to give them some access to some facilities that get absolutely nothing. So I won't support it. Hey, thank you. Councillor Coxhead. Um, I hear what Councillor Thwaites is saying, but that community hall um, in Waihi Beach is particularly well used um, constantly. And of course, the population there doubles, if not triples, over summer and is used for an awful lot of events. So um, I'm supporting it. A couple more. Well, uh, Councillor Sol first thing. Uh, thank you, sir. Look, basically, I, I support the motion in the end. But um, I, I will say that uh, less haste with this one. I, I feel that what we're doing um, is, is good and makes some sense, but I feel it could be, as has been pointed out, um, when we get to view it probably within a long-term plan issue even again, um, prove to be a little bit of an albatross uh, around the neck of the district. Um, so I have a, at times a tendency to support him with um, number three. 
but I will go with it. Waihi Beach does need to get something moving. There are a number of people now that are against it in, in the district, and I was certainly uh, collared by a number of them last night. But some planning over due, in due course may be a good thing if it's close to the time when we know what the bigger picture is like for our future. Yeah. I think I agree that we're doing this preliminary work, get some more certainty around the figures and uh, whether to proceed or not. Um, Councillor Joyce. Um, I am supportive of this. I do think our communities need good library facilities. I was horrified, like many, by the previous budget. Um, and I couldn't see how you could justify $7 million for a library, particularly when we already have in the land. I mean, yeah. And it seemed to come down to some very fancy curved walls and things that really aren't necessary. I do think we need to cut our cloth. So I am in favour of good community libraries. Um, they do need to modernise, and that creates its own challenges. You know, it's no longer where you go to get your collected works of Shakespeare anymore. Um, you know, to be honest, I, option one and option three are not that different. Um, option one is that we do some design work, and we've managed to get that again out of rates, so there'll be no rates impact this year. We've moved that um, into a rate reserve. Um, I am uncomfortable with the phrase through to building consent because we're, you know, we, in 1.1, we say we can go through to building consent and 1.2 says, actually, no, yeah, we're going to do a review. So those two contradict to me. I mean, there's no way we're going to, um, I don't see any way we're going to do this without it going through the long-term plan. So um, I don't know if I'm allowed to move an amendment at this point, but I would move to strike those four words because I don't think it's feasible and yeah, we should be, not putting the cart before the horse. You know, and that brings, in fact, option 1.1, apart from obviously the rather major matter of carrying on with a redesign, um, closer to option three. You know, I don't see that we are ready to go through to a building consent if we can't even, haven't even agreed the design yet. I just think that's, that's opening the door for something happening without going to further consultation. Thank you. Councillor Granger. Uh, Councillor Joyce has covered my points. Thanks. <laughs> Councillor Crawford. So if this um, was deferred, how does that affect other towns that have got libraries, you know, projected to, like Te Poki, for example, are due for a new library too? So when we consider deferring this, does that mean other, you know, Towns that are going to like do for a library. How is that? They're affected by that decision. We'll go to Mr. Ellis. Um, you would be making those decisions through the long term plan. So you can change the timing through the long term plan of the, the libraries. Um, the, there was a strategy 10 plus years ago that set out the order based on uh, the assessed demand at the time. But um, through your long term plan, you can review that. Can I just leave again? Yes. So I guess the question I was asking, Gary, is decision making on Whitehead Beach. Based on what you just said about, you know, whose turn it is to have what's next. Um, so like, you know, Don was saying we should defer this, that option three is it, I think. If we were went that way, how would that affect other in the long-term plan, the scheduling of others? Because obviously for the reason. Why are we, you know, why would we choose not to go ahead with this? And is it because we want to keep the rates down? Or is it, and then how does that impact in the future? Um, so option three, sorry, just let me remind myself of, um, means that we wouldn't do any further work on it until you agree to the funding and the timing and the long-term plan. So that pushes the timing of this one out. You can do two libraries in parallel at the same time, um, but I would suggest that that your, I mean, the current rate impact you're concerned about now um, increases significantly if you're doing two at the same time, um, and we actually have the swimming pool on the same sort of time frame. Uh, so there's quite a lot of big stuff coming up. So deferring it just compresses it, or you push it out further. Thank you, Councillor Daly. Um, yeah, I was really would like to show a bit of love towards Don's position on this one. And after yesterday's 
debacle, but um, after reading option one and, and the discussion we had at the workshop around a new concept that maybe is a bit simpler and, and um, less expensive, then I think I'm happy to go with this option one. Thank you, Councillor Murray Benge. I, yes. I think I think the mayor highlighted the issue here that the review of the design, building size, and external funding be undertaken as part of the process. So I think that's what gives one confidence that we'll be doing the best we can to make sure that it's cut down to size. But Tapuki has a library; you'd compare it as a palace compared to what they've got at, at Waihee Beach. I can't believe that a woman could even work in there, and she does, and she's very cheerful, but God only knows why, because it's not a great place, I tell you, in my opinion, and I'm quite sure Councillor Coxie, who goes into it regularly, would agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Aye. Carry. So the reasoning is doing the reviewing the project and um, trying to think the advantages. Yeah, it does say the design and engineering costs, but um, yeah, it gives the opportunity for a review before before the go button's pressed. I don't know how you can press that into the right words. The go or stop button is pressed. Is that clear enough? Thank you. All right. Water source treatment and improvements. Uh, there are two options uh, with this issues and options paper. Uh, the first is the recommended option, which is that the council provides funding for the for the water source treatment and network wide improvements, which are required to achieve compliance of the new drinking water standards. Um, it should also be noted that there is a further funding of seven hundred thousand required in the following year. Um, the second option is that you do not provide any funding. Uh, towards this. Councillor Coxie. So, so what are the standards, the new standards, like in a nutshell, I don't want, you know, big detail on this, but what are the new standards that are being imposed? And, and if we didn't meet the new requirements, what, what's the impact on us? Okay, so there's a new set of standards through Tamara Arawai, which came into effect the um, start of January. Um, the effect is that if you don't comply, you'll be prosecuted. You'll be prosecuted. The council will be prosecuted for not complying with the standards. Um, I'm really going, this is a no choice option. Mm. You have to do the upgrades. And it's, it's to essentially, and there's a report on it in your financial and risk committee that with one of the attachments there that talks about um, what's required and also our current compliance. Um, and you. you'll see from that report, there's okay. a whole lot of reds. So it has to be done. Councillor Sol. Thank you, sir. Yeah, totally. I see it. This is one area that um, our council for many years has prided itself on and the way it's supplied and looked after its waters in general. But the, the water getting to BB standard is, is probably as high as we'll ever get unless the new standards somehow get reduced or we get pushed into going up. Um, and it's just... A no-brainer, we must do it. Thank you, Councillor Joyce. This is a question. Um, OPEX funding from rates, don't we charge water costs as water charges? Why would we raid the rates to do OPEX funding for these improvements? Wouldn't we generally? Well, we have a $352 or whatever it is. So it could be a water rate. So it could be a water that, rate. That's a, a rate charge, and then we charge have a metered charge on top of that. Right. So, so it'll be coming basically from that rate charge, I believe. Essentially, the two charges are merged into the single funding stream. And um, the in this case, it's an operating cost that would tend to come out of the water charges, but um, it doesn't alter the rates. Remember, for the three waters, we've gone for a 1% rate increase on those. And um, 
saying um, if you made it water charges compared to rates, it makes no difference. Okay, so to clarify, because I'm a newbie, so water charges would be listed here as rates, but it's actually going to be charged to users. It's, it's charged to users and it's charged to users through both the line charge as, for example, maintaining the capital and then an operating cost through the water charges. So were you wanting to move Council Sol? Yes, sir, I'm wishing to move um, option one. I'm seconded Councillor Joyce. Count Mayor. Um, I just want to say that, um, as Gary says, this is a no option thing because it's, it's um, it prosecuted. I think the other thing to bear in mind, because I know there's some sentiments in the community about this, is that this is largely funded through through loans and they will transfer with the um, to the WSE in, in due course if that all happens. So, um, yeah, it, it's. I know there's been some questions about why we why we spend the money now up, up front rather than wait. But um, in fact, the money will just transfer with the debt. All right. We seem to have exhausted the speakers. I'll put the motion in. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against. Carry. And so that brings us to the fluoridation. Councillor Sol. Mr Chair, um, again, this basically was something in which it's, it's um, uh, Russian roulette with, with a fully loaded handgun if we don't do it. Um, so, sir, basically I feel we just need to go ahead and I'll move um, what will be, I presume, option one. Okay. Um, were you moving or no. did you have a question? Uh, yeah, so oh, so, so, sorry. Yeah. All right. It's been moved. Councillor Sol, I want to second it first. Mayor. All right. Councillor Coxie. So the way I see it, it's, it's a small amount of money, but we can defer it until next year. And I mean, it's been mandated by the Director of um, Health, Ashley Blomfield, when he left Parliament, uh, sorry, when he left his last role. Um, I don't see why we don't just defer this because a change of government could um, change the view on this. And this is a very hot topic in the community. I think you'll get 50-50 in terms of who's for it and who's against it. I, I, I'm in favour of deferring it and I would, well, can I say I want to support option two? Okay, right. There were some other hands moved down there. Did, well, we'll go down the other end. Councillor Granger. Yeah, I just wonder if there's a, a word missing somewhere in no, option yeah. one. <laughs> no, not option two. Um, and that that the council and that the contract prepared and let in 2023-24, well, that's in the future no, prepared as an option two. It doesn't quite read right, so I don't know what it's meant to say. Do you wish to comment? Can you help us, please, Mr. Ellis? Uh, you have to have it in place by mid-25, and it's about a year's worth of installation. So to meet the requirements of MOH, we have to prepare the contract and let it in the next, in the 24 financial year. So what, but I'm not quite sure what word you think is missing. Should, should the word be, so, be, the contract be prepared and let? Is there a word missing? Um, yes, I think that's the issue. We, we have to let, we will need to let the contract in 23, 24 to meet the timeframes to have it completed. Yeah, so as so to the end of the 23, 24, so yes. the intention was that the contract's just in place and going when the assets are transferred to Entity B. You note the note at the bottom that if, if that subsidy is received, it can be advanced. We put the word B. I think it should have, as you say, the word B. So, Mayor Daniel? I just want to clarify a comment that Councillor Cox had made. Um, option one means we defer as long as we can. Mm. Option, it's option two that does it no. as quickly as My possible. mistake. I, I thought it said um, that was the deferral one. My mistake definitely don't support option two. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cal Councillor Murray Bench. Could I just ask a question, please? Could I ask a question? Um, what sort of subsidy is coming through? 
is there a subsidy? And because one of the things that really bugs me is that central government will come up with a bright idea and dump it on us without any funding coming along with it. And Councillor Cox said is right. The division between those who believe in fluoride and those who don't, I've had considerable experience with it in the past. And I can tell you it is, the society is divided on it as much today as it was 10 years ago. More and so. More so, right. And uh, I can remember the first call I got was from a doctor telling me how pleased it was being removed because people could self-medicate. And so since then, you've got fluoride and all sorts of things, and really, should it be justified? And I think, more importantly, if the government is so keen on it, for goodness sake, fund it. But my second question, Mr. Chairman, is to Mr. Ellis. How many of these have we got to put in, and how much is the overall cost going to be to this council? I think we were told that uh, recently, but there's two at this stage, and the rest of them coming. How ultimately, it will be all of them. Absolutely correct. So to answer your first question, we don't know what the subsidy will be. We've applied for 100%, but we have not heard. Is there a subsidy? There's a subsidy application process. Um, whether we get it's not been determined yet. Um, and secondly, we, we are predicting we will have to do the rest of our treatment plants over time, another five. So about another $4 million, roughly. Councillor Joyce. A question, if we adopt option one, will it still come back to a council committee or council before we go ahead? Or are we saying, is, you know, once we pass this through the annual plan process, are we saying to officers, go ahead, you don't need to come back to us? It's just unclear to me what the process is beyond the annual plan. I would expect it to come back to council. Mr Ellis may have a different view, but if there's a subsidy um, approved, I would still expect them to come back for us to give our ticket yeah. of approval. Yeah. yeah, so if the subsidy was approved, then we'd come back to you and go, here are the conditions of the subsidy. Um, we need a decision on the timing of proceeding from you, but to meet the conditions of the subsidy. So we can't quite tell that yet. If you want to make the decision as to do we let a contract, um, as a decision-making point, then I would put that in the resolution. So it's very clear we'll up front. So we'll come back to this one way or another. You haven't got in the resolution at the moment, I just add. So um, perhaps um, Bex will just add to that resolution that um, that prior to proceeding with the contract, it comes back to council for decision-making. Councillor Murray Benge. So if this goes out in the uh, consultation for the annual plan and people say they don't want it, what do we do then? You tell them that the government requires it, that this won't be a consultation, the annual plan consultation documents required to outline the material and significant changes and explain why they exist. So this will be one of the ones that we explain why there's been a change to our budgets. It's not going to be one that we say yes or no, what do you want, what these are the options to the community about. Okay, oh, Council. Right. Basically, again, we have little choice. Uh, I came from a family where my mother gave me a little tablet. Okay, so yes, self-medicated that. Um, whether I agree with it or not is immaterial. Whether other people agree with it or not, the health department are requiring it. What amazes me with it is uh, that they actually picked on Athenry, well, the Athenry treatment plant and, and uh, Forafara, mm. um, when probably the place with the biggest number of children that would benefit from it is Tipuki. Exactly. Um, so you can see there wasn't a hell of a lot of thought put into it, but that's the case. It's required. Sir, I see no choice. That's why I support this going through and being, again, I guess, as little progress as possible, but preparation be done and ready to move at the time when it's forced upon us. Thank you. I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carry. So um, I note in the advantages it's got here, Entity B will fund the installation costs if delayed to 20, oh, sorry, 
I was getting mixed up with Entity B and the subsidy. I better shut my mouth. <laughs> so, so you raise a really good point, but Entity B, we're discovering it is not the Crown that will actually um, take the debt, it's the ratepayers. So one way or the other, they're trapped in on this lot. Okay. Moving on then. Back to me. Uh, to Pukki Wastewater Treatment Plant Upgrades. So this IOP sets out moving from a two-stage upgrade process to a one, a single-stage construction project. Uh, there's two options presented. The recommended option is option one. The council approves the design and construction to replace the existing Tupuki wastewater treatment plant and constructs a totally new wastewater treatment plant. And that the council approves an additional budget of 8.86 million for the annual plan financial year. Um, Gary is available for answering any questions again. I think, um, oh, sorry, Councillor Granger. Uh, yes, I just wonder, is there a mistake in those options because both options exactly cost the same amount and I thought that well, there was a slight difference in the two options. Both have 8.86 million in them. The difference to, between the options is between a partial new plant and a full plant. So it's between um, staying with the um, an upgrade of the existing and a parallel new plant versus the new plant. The timing for the funding is the same. It's the amount of funding you're saying is the same for whether it's a new plant or an upgraded. And there was a bit of a difference, wasn't there? Yeah, about 10%, but that will happen more towards the end of the okay. process. And I think I saw something floating around you put forward this morning, Mr. Ellis the change that it be FinCo funded, was that correct? Yes, so um, if you recall from yesterday's presentation that the council has a, an agreement with Keysight about um, $15 million funding towards the, um, sort of like loan funding towards the um, infrastructure costs um, around your business park. And so uh, what we've looked at is the timing of that. Um, and so it, it, timing felt was right to um, put that $15 million actually into the budget for next year, which would then, as our debt transfer to Entity B um, the following year. Uh, we've got to commit that, so Council made that commitment to support the business park and uh, the, again, the presentation yesterday talked about the, what they call the overhang. They need to invest more money than their share to get the park going. And this is one way council supports the park proceeding. Thank you. Councillor Murray Benj. I'm very much, I'm very much in favour of option one. I think uh, with Rangiuru coming along, this uh, being involved, this I think will help the project. And the sooner we can get on with it, the better. I'm happy to move it, sir, when you're ready. Thank you. We have a second up, Councillor Granger. No more, Councillor Sol. Yes, sir. Totally supported again. I I see Tipuki just mushrooming, and that's in residential and and industrial. It needs to have that plant there. Again, little choice if we want to encourage the uh, growth and performance of of our, um, our. I guess really even our council, but uh, the way that we uh, enable people to progress and provide. Uh, housing and work industry, we need to support this right now. Thank you. Councillor Joyce. I also speak in support, just to let people know that I don't always try to squash spending. Um, but the, um, and this is a, this is a multi-generational project, so it's appropriately funded from loans. Um, I would note that it is quite a lot to do with Rangiuru, and they're about to start the sales process. So I would hope that we keep a close track on how that's going. Obviously, they're very bullish, but they haven't got any contracts yet. So let's also keep a close eye on how Rangiuru goes, because a large part of the spending is to do with that. Thank you. Mayor Dania. I'll speak in favour. I also, also want to ask, um, perhaps Gary, that the WSC, World Water Service Entity, is, 
is fully up to speed with the options and they they're happy with um whichever we would choose uh, so we're still waiting for formal feedback from the entity so we we um engaged with them before christmas we had a provisional initial within one day verbal yes but it had to go through the process it's outside their agreed time frames now so it's one of our chase up things is going where's our answer but we understand they've had a number of these types of questions from councils around the country which they're trying to work through the internal process which is brand new to them thank you councillor crawford so when that new one's built i think when we looked at it gary talked about that it has to be built while the other one's still operational so it's going to be i don't know if you guys were that but there's that bit of land there, but we have to build a new one before we can decommission the other one. So. Yeah, so the, the land's adjacent, so we're building adjacent to it, um, and we have to keep a plant going. So it's best to keep the old one going while we build the new one, and then it provides um, a buffer for commissioning of the new plant, and then the ability to utilise some of the old plant for what we call our um, wet weather peak storage, um, so that you buffer your flows into the plant through using some of the old facility. All right, I'm gonna put the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Against, carry. I think there could be, what well, it's sort of hinted at in there and those advantages, it could be stated clearly what Mr. Ellis has just said, the opportunity to build a new plant while the alongside while the existing plant's operational makes it less messy going forward. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. All right, we are down to structure plan review. So the structure plan IOP presents the review structure plans. So these deal with our growth related infrastructure and it's through the annual plan process and long term plan processes. We look at what's the growth projected to be over the next 12 months, what projects need to be moved for timing and cost. But Gary's available again to answer all the questions. <laughs> Any questions? Did you have one? Yeah, Councillor Joyce. So I know the chairman of the Kauri Kauri Community Board has some concerns about the Wills, Tetley and Marshall Roads project. Um, the way this is written, I assume it isn't a structure plan, but right? because I he was unaware of it. So was this in the long-term plan? Has it been scheduled for some time? Um, and you know, how was the priority arrived at? I mean, I know they sound very bolshy questions, but I am genuinely looking for the nice answers if possible. Uh, so, so the um, the Marshall Road upgrade was always in the structure plan um, and it was to do with um, the growth. So it includes, but it, there was a couple of other components with it that had the um, culvert upgrade that was required uh, and the road rehabilitation. So again, it's the type of project that has a multi-funding sources, uh, but the project is as per the structure plan in terms of upgrading uh, and then um, extending the footpaths to the west, I guess, Northwest um, to to match that to meet up with those two developments that are along Tetley Road. So well, sounds very reasonable to me. Um, and as I look at it every day as I go to work, then it's certainly an intensive project. And I think didn't we lose a truck off the side at one stage a few months ago? Someone actually dropped themselves down to the drain, and it is an area that's urbanising very rapidly. Now we just need to get it out of the um, rural post area. Yeah, and Tetley Road is further down the schedule, but it's due for one side urbanisation. Thank you, Councillor Granger. In the absence of an alternate option, I suggest we go with the recommended decision. Thank you. So it's been moved by you. Got a seconder? Councillor Murray Benj. Nobody's rushing to speak, so I'll put the motion. All in favour? Against, carried. All right. Yes, so I, missed, I missed a question. I missed a question. On page 122, 
under the Mokara Utilities Urban Structure Plan. The funding source column just says 100%, but it doesn't say 100% from where. Is that a typo? Someone's been a member of the public for a while. The wider council public pointed that out to me. It's, it's got contribution of 100% from... 100%. So if you look at the top of if you look at the top of the column, yeah, we've got the right column. It says funding source. It should say um, financial contribution. You can just see the word contribution. Ah, okay. So it's Finco's. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully that helps the chairman of the Waikiki Community Board, who maybe each community board who's asking. So if we could make that clear on any document in the future. All right. Use of general rate reserve. So this last one is probably the most exciting one. Um, <laughs> and just to cover off, I guess we talked about it right at the start on how the team before Christmas came in with the 22%. We worked through and came up with the reductions as per now. So in the workshops, we've covered off the fact that we've gone from 22% and then we went through 12, 8 and so on internally. And now we've got the 7.41%, which is in this paper. Um, obviously, in order to go down any further, we'll be touching on um, general rates reserve as an option. And we've also got in here some options for how we may do that. And um, you've also got the detailed capital project plans um, in those papers as well you to have a look at um, and ask any further questions required and um, what we've got here is two options effectively to um, if you choose to decide either or then that they, they're part of that and we've already modeled it so those two come out to effectively from the 7.41 percent down to um, just scrolling down quickly the six point nine four and a further 0.54% down. So effectively, those ones are as part of this option. Um, obviously, you guys want to talk a little bit more on the projects themselves. We can go away and talk about those. However, that will mean that we would have to remodel and come back to. So um, as officers, these are the proposed options. It doesn't mean that you've got no other options, but that's how we would like to run this for ease of um, use. If you did want to go down to any specific projects in the options paper, we can talk through that. Um, and we would prefer that we work through that rather than um, jump into a further option, which is not outlined in this paper. But that's again out for discussion. So uh, we're happy to talk through any questions before we start or leave thank, it to you guys. Thank you, Azura. Yeah. Um, Council Murray Bench. If we approve this, what will be the implication on next year's rates? Yeah, and that's a, that's a very good question. Um, effectively, if you approve the 7.41%, um, obviously that would be part of the LTP discussion because there's a lot of dis decisions to be made yet, so we would re-look at it. However, if we were to go down any further than this, we're definitely looking at quite high double digits. Um, we haven't done modelling for LTP just because of um, all these associated factors with NTU debt, all of those settlements discussions being um, contained. Actually, tomorrow would be one of those key decisions makings. Um, in terms of the tapping into any further general rate reserve, that is really shaky territory at this point because the more deeper we dive into reserves, um, especially with all of the flooding that's caused and recent cyclone events. Um, you will have Aon coming to talk to you around insurance in a little bit more detail around those risks as well. So bearing in mind all of those extra modeling that we're about to do, um, definitely it will put you in quite a risk position. Um, the team here have also highlighted around the LTP amendments, which were quite, um, it's forefront of our mind at the moment. I know it doesn't give you a number because, again, that all relates to all the decisions here to remodel all of that and come back to you. And, of course, LTP is the um, place for those discussions. Okay, thank you for that background. Questions? I'm not sure that I clearly understand that. What are you saying the implications are on next year's, the following year's rate demand? Will we be looking at an excessive amount of increase or does it not impact at all? So, if we go, sorry. 
effectively, if we talk through the advantages, um, the first option one, so if, if we on page 134, choosing option one would give us a reduction in rates um, increase by 1.66%, which is to 7.41, that's a recommendation, the preferred option. That one, the advantages are obviously no future financial impact on future years at this stage. And um, the disadvantages is the general rate reserve that we are tapping into. And we're very conscious of that and just want to really highlight that because if we tap into any further, that will mean that next year's rates will definitely not be as per the current um, estimates at this stage. <laughs> Councillor Joyce. So a question, because in option three, for example, um, are, are, are these all one-off <laughs> projects? So I'm not sure how. I mean, if we I, I get it, if we go into the rates reserve and fund OPEX, for example, you know, we go into the rates reserve and fund you know the truck going around picking up the recycling, then that obviously will have an impact on next year's rates. But as I understood, these these are all one-off spends. So we haven't gone into OPEX. So the issue then is not next year's rates because these are one-off projects the question is how deep we want to go into the race reserve for as for this year i mean was that right i mean i'm not sure how we get an implication for future year rates if we're not using the rates reserve for opex can i ask you to answer that please rachel um thank you chair john i think that that is exactly what azura was saying so um to so she's cautioning against going any further into our general rate reserve uh, from a risk perspective, bearing in mind um, the conversation that needs to be had around, with our insurer, which is coming up. Um, and secondly, if we are to, it would be difficult to find further projects that, uh, in fact, it would be nigh on impossible to find any further projects that are one year projects to fund through the general rate reserve anyway. So if we were to do anything else, that's when Azura is suggesting that there would be a, um, an implication on out years, a double digits implication for out years. Okay, can, I, can I just add further to that? So there's a pipeline of work and that each year there's one-off projects. So you might rate general rate reserve fund them for this year, but then next year's, you've still got to cover those costs somehow. You will have that conversation for the long-term plan. And that is a conversation that you will rightfully have and decide what, how to cut your cloth, as you say, but there is a pipeline of projects. So if you fund something on reserves too much this year, then you've got to make up for that in the following years. Yeah, everybody's sitting deep in thought. Yeah. Do you, need, do you need to have a five minute break to get a cup of tea? Because we have been meeting for a while. Do you want to progress? If you want to progress, I'm keen to keep one, going. One, one question. Okay. Um, Rachel just said that if we go any further, it'll cost us in the future. So any further than which of these options? <laughs> <laughs> so to reiterate again, option one is the preferred option. And which gets us to a, a rate rise for 23-24 of 7.41%. And you just, just clarifying that a little bit. So you're saying that these other two options are the ones that start to impact on future year's rates. Is that, is that what you're saying? That yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 that is what, that's what you're saying. Uh, it's in, uh, in the disadvantages for option two and three is that they are unlikely to have future impacts, as my colleague here has, for some reason that's now sort of the buzz, um, has said that it's that pipeline of work issue. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay. Just, just, a, uh, just question, one, one conversation at a time. Council Sol, please. Just a question, just because it was alluded to there. What is the projected 
rate for next year? You did allude to that at present being sort of somewhere in a palatable area as opposed to if we took another option, it could get out. I just, for my own interest, I guess, and looking at where we're going. Where, where do you see that sitting at present if we take option A or one? It, it's a very good question. Um, obviously, for the purpose of this exercise, we focus very much on the annual plan year. Uh, a lot of work has gone into moving projects around further deferring, transferring. And so in the LTP, what we've got there right now really is impacted by future years. We're also doing forecasting, which has um, right now we've done a, a semi forecast currently, and that impacts next year. Now, these decisions, we haven't remodeled the entire LTP because at the moment we're really focused with NTU on our current position and the annual plan. Tomorrow, we're having discussions with NTU around the waters. So because there's a lot of moving elements, we're actually leaving that detailed conversation for the LTP. Um, it really does. It is a tricky area because of all of the work we're doing with NTU. So I won't be able to give you a number right there, but if we were to carry on, um, the reserves impact is quite high at the moment, as you can see in front of us. So that um, it really is. So numbers wise, we won't be putting out any numbers at this stage, um, just because of all of the moving streams. <laughs> Excuse me, just trying to keep up with these pages. Okay, Council Granger. Well, I must confess I'm still slightly confused as to why paying something this year out of a slightly different pocket from the one we were going to pay it out of creates or defers an increase that needs to happen next year. I guess um, the main options that we're considering is through the general rate reserve. The more we dip into the general rate reserve, there'll be less left in the general rate reserve. And depending on what other uses, um, the cyclone and the flooding and all those is a very classic example of unexpected usage. And so it is from a risk perspective, we're flagging that. Um, and if we continue to use that and we run out of reserves to tap into, that becomes one of the issues. Um, also, given the inflationary pressures and bill and all of that that we've actually discussed um, in previous conversations as well, but just to re bring that to our mind, is as it increases, we're actually reducing our capacity. And the more we reduce that capacity, there's only certain levers that we can pull. Um, as you're all aware, loan funding is one of them interest is one of them, um, but interest is not in our control. So there's some that are in our control, some not in our control. And therefore, the more that we use the reserves, all we're flagging is that will really reduce our capacity for future years. I fully understand that, but I do not understand how the, the second disadvantage here, that there will be a financial impact in future years is it defers increases. So what increases are we deferring that will need to be addressed at some future point? I'm going to go to the Chief Executive wants to try and answer that for you, I think, Murray. I think, um, and I think it was what um, Rachel was referring to earlier around the sort of pipe, pipeline of funding. If we take a sort of a, a base um, rate that we've got, um, that, that does cater for a number of one-off projects. So we're removing those projects and therefore the rate associated them and paying them out of um, reserve, we've actually removed that base that, that base for some smaller future projects in the future. So how do we get that back? How do we come back up to what our, our base rate was? Does that make sense? Yeah. Look, look, I'm sensing, I think we should take five minutes. We've been meeting for a long time and, and grab yourselves a drink and um, It'll give you time to clear your minds and give your brain a sugar fix and we'll come back and try and nail this. So take five minutes.
continuing our deliberations. So um, we've been talking, we're talking there before we broke in regard to the general rate reserve and uh, the extent that you wish to use that. Perhaps I should reiterate um, my comments from the beginning of the meeting that we're not actually setting the rates today. We are preparing a draft or a proposal to go out and consult with the community about. So it's not the final hurdle. But with that in mind, um, hopefully we dealt with the questions before. If there are further questions before we proceed. Yep, looks like a couple. So, Councillor Joyce. Sorry, in an email, Rebecca, um, through you, Mr Chairman, um, you said you might have some information about how the current modelling, which is the using option one, 7.41, would fall on different rate payers. Perhaps we could share that before we look at the options. It would be helpful to us in our deliberations. You've got to remember that when we actually strike the rates, we had a presentation at the beginning of this meeting about a new valuation. So it will be slightly different. Yeah, we're looking at four because they don't all move in tandem. So well, my point is though, we would look we know these will change, right? But they give us an idea of the quantums, right? And um, yeah, particularly being a revaluation year, it could change a bit, but at least we'll give an idea of where we sit before we, as, we, you know, as we're partway through the process. Through to you, Chair. Um, just um, as the papers are being handed out, I just wanted to re-highlight uh, the commentary at the beginning around the QV um, only being able to finalise around April. So just want to really flag that these examples are there as of now. Um, obviously, just again, reiterating that, um, you know, be mindful when you look at those examples, but hopefully that gives you a bit of an indication. Thank you. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes to try and digest that. Remember that, Margaret, that they pay more rates in the first place. So while their increase might not be quite as high, they'll still be, they probably pay, the increase is probably more in dollar terms because it's on a bigger, off a bigger base. Um, Councillor Joyce. So one related question, urban residential, the rates charge, average annual rates charge in the lower quartile is higher than the average annual charge in the median value. Is that correct? So you've got 3250 for the lower quartile and then 3049 for the median. That seems a bit strange to me, although except with the mixture yeah. of uniform annual charge and land rating and capital rating, strange things happen, but that does seem a little bit out to me. Yeah. Are you able to comment, Azul? Um, not close enough to the individual rates, but just to highlight, these are very sample properties that have been brought through. So depending on the individual property that's been brought through, um, obviously it'll uh, vary. Now, um, in terms of the average rates, it's literally just one or two sample properties as at the 25th percentile, 20, uh, 50th and 75th. Um, the team have just chosen sample properties for this exercise. So it's just literally one property out of those quantities. 
So, so essentially, it could be a distortion effect. It, it could be. And so these are just examples for today. Um, we're happy to go away and look at it into details. Um, obviously, we'll present back at the adoption of the CD. Thank you. Mayor Dina? I think while, whilst this is of interest, I think we need to, we need to be cautious about looking at this and trying to engineer our decisions to, to get to, to some, some number based on this. The, um, th this, should, this is the output, this, this will be the output of our decisions uh, and not the other way around, I think. Um, so we need to be a bit cautious here and also bearing, bearing in mind Azura's um, caveats as well. Um, but as a, as a high level overview, then um, sure, of interest. Okay, well, we need to get back to the job at hand, which is um, reaching a position in terms of the use of the general rate reserve. So I guess I'm looking for someone to move. Um, Mr. Joyce, Councillor Joyce, you were first. So. Oh, sorry, can't go there. We're still on questions. Just under the option one. Microphone. Just five, I'm to find that four hundred and thirty-four thousand nine hundred and twenty for the Wade Beach Library project. Where does that come from? Where uh, this norm was that? That includes um, funding this year's or the allocation that was already in the budget. Um, so you had two components. You had. Um, $274,000 that you already approved through a resolution to bring forward to proceed with the design and the further $250,000 that was required to do the full engineering design, geotech, uh, and um, get the building consent stage. Right, Councillor Joyce, I went to you a minute ago. Sorry, yeah, I'm still confused, but actually now by Don's question, which I think is a very good question. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I'll come we, to the mayor, please, then. Can we, I mean, I still want to move, but I just um, think we need a clearer answer on Don's question, because I'm confused, because I thought we were going for 200 and something thousand rather than 400 something thousand. Um, so I'm just, can we get an answer, a more full answer to that? Because I'm just scrolling back furiously, trying to find what we approved. I'll just wait for Mr. Ellis to be able to confirm um, the true situation. Uh, Rebecca. And the resolution for the Waihi Beach Community Hub Library and Community Hub project was a funding with a further 250,000. Um, that's what that is about it's about additional funding. It's the first time anyone's ever accused me of talking quietly. <laughs> <laughs> the option one for the Waihi Beach Library and Community Hub has is in that option 1.1 specifies that the $250,000 is a further funding. Um, so it's an additional funding on top of what was already in the budget. So yesterday I was accused of talking about the wrong year. So now we're actually including in that this year's spending. And we're supposed to be talking about next year's. No. What was budgeted for the next annual plan year plus an additional 250. Okay. So anyway, I would move um, option three. And I presume if I get a seconder, I would uh, like to speak to All right, so you've moved then. Um, do we have a seconder? Councillor Daly has seconded. So let's just look at the situation as we are. I mean, many, many of our residents and ratepayers are facing major increases in costs. Are we delaying things by doing this? Yes, we are a bit. There's no doubt about it, and the office has been very clear on that. Um, but you know, option one is above inflation. So I cannot see how we can go out to people and say inflation's really high, so we're going to top inflation. I mean, it just, I don't see how that is uh, good for our residents and ratepayers. Um, 
I understand and I fully take on board that, you know, the, the council has a pipeline of work and um, you know, this may cause us to have to take a closer look next year as well. I'm fine with that. I take Murray's point, you know, let's save the money for our residents and ratepayers, and then we look at it next year again, which happens also to be our long-term plan year. So we, you know, we'll be taking a, a much deeper look anyway. Um, but in terms of helping our people when mortgages costs are going through the roof, when food costs are going through the roof, when general inflation is going through the roof, when the kiwi fruit industry has got a huge number of problems that they are worried about, um, the avocado industry is in the dogs as well, right? You know, it's, it's, um, I think we need to get on board with the Reserve Bank Governor and exercise some self-control in fiscal policy and help our people out. And then that gives us some breathing space until we go into the long-term plan. And, um, you know, this is, some people say, oh, this is politics, this is politics. No, this is helping our people. This is absolutely about helping our people in tough times. And I, was, I really would struggle to understand a council that right now would go out, say, with option one, which is above the inflation rate. You know, people with mortgages are struggling, and that's a lot of people in our community. And I think it's time we recognise that struggle and, you know, saw this as a special case here. Go to the mayor. Um, firstly, I'm going to make a suggestion, and I don't know how you, this might fit with standing orders, but I'm going to make it, and I was going to do it before. Roddy. I can see this because there's three options and potential amendments, and it could get rather complicated. I was going to suggest that we move option one, and then if, if the desire is there amongst elected members, move option two as an addition and keep going until we... Um, feel that's where we want to end it. So if you if you moved option one and stop there, stop there, and then the second option two, which is which effectively adds to option one, and then similarly for option three adds to, adds to the rest of those. It could be a clean so, word doing so, it. So steps to get to the end solution. Okay. I'm getting some nods. Councillor Joyce, you uh, wish to move. Uh, do you have well, I, I won't be moving option one because I do not believe it is a responsible yeah, yeah, option. Yeah, 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 but are you satisfied with that process to, to get to where you If the council to... satisfied with that process as a group, then I, you know, I'm happy to, to go with that. I, I don't see option one as an option myself, so I certainly won't be yeah, moving yeah, option yeah, I one. I fully understand that. So are we prepared to take it in bites? Essentially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Councillor Daly. Uh, just for clarification, so if we pass option one, yes, approve option one, then That's a, mo a motion is put to then add to we'll, option we'll look, two. We'll so we'll look. need a, a mover and a second to, to go to option two. Yes. And a mover and a second to go to option three. So we're yes. running out of people who can Well, if, if we don't approve two, There'd probably be no point in going to three. But well, you get yeah, yeah, yeah. your principle absolutely right. We are moving out of potential movers and seconders. Yes, sir. Can't move option three if I move option two. You're actually restricting my options. Well, there's still eleven of us here and another one on the screen. So, or she was, I think. She gone. Still eleven of us here. I just, yeah. yeah. Could I just ask what Councillor Murray Benj wants to say first? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, I like what he, uh, Rodney is saying about the cost of people who've got mortgages in their yeah, homes. Yeah, yeah. Could, could you just confine We've yourself got to 6 the percent? Six point three three percent increase if we go for option three. If we go for option two, what was the increase there? 6.9 and but the other one is of course the implications is for next year so what was the option one increase 7.4 mm. can i see this an alternative path let's stick with option three if that's i just lost. seek a bit of advice for yeah. a moment please you can't go for option one and then Thank 
Okay, thank you. Um, all right, after uh, um, discussing it with councillors, I've been advised that it's not the smartest way to proceed. So, uh, um, so, so we're back to where we were. Rodney has moved option three. Do we have a second? Oh, sorry, yes, yes. See how you confuse me. Um, okay. No more questions. I think we've given it a fair bash around. Speakers, please. What will the implications be for next year's rate demand if we go for option three? Well, we can't spell that out other than to say that it, in, it, it, um, the likelihood of a higher rate increase next year increases. All right, so I think the mayor was signaling he wished to speak. Yeah, I, I can't spot option three. Um, I think it would not be financially prudent. Um, talk about the, the rate of inflation. Well, we also have to consider LGCI, the, the local government inflation rate. Um, our construction costs are going up way more than um, consumer price index. Um, we're also a service provider. It's not entirely the same as as everyone else, but you don't go to uh, uh, I don't know the, the shop and, and they're doing you a favour by reducing prices. Um, yes, we do have a well-being aspect to us, but we also do provide those services on an ongoing basis. Looking at option three, the extra, the incremental one-offs, and I'll put those in air quotes, they're starting to scrape the barrel of what you could call a one-off. There, there's basically annual one-offs. They're all the all the little jobs we do, um, tidy up the reserves and and, um, and and things like that. So no, I can't support three, and I think it would be imprudent to do so. Thank you, Councillor Wickers. Um, yeah, I, I I I'd like to support it, but I don't think I can. Just thinking of the the longer term implications, um, the the difference between the 7.4 and the 6.3 is effectively $52 a year on a $3,000, $3,500 uh, rates bill. Uh, that's a dollar a week. Um, if you go to the um, go to the the 6.33, like it, it, it will sound good politically, um, but realistically, uh, this is the world we're in. Yep. Council Thwaites. Yeah, I won't be supporting three, two, or one because of that and blowout in the library charge. I don't believe this decision actually even needs to be made today. I think you need to take account of all the decisions you've made now and come back on the day that you're going to do it, bring it forward, and then present the options then and find maybe there's some other projects out there that might even fit the bill that aren't going to have ongoing effect that could be funded in it. Um, so I'll just be a no vote. Might as well go home, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other speakers? <laughs> Councillor Daly. Uh, well, since I've seconded, I better speak in favour of it. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit like Don. I've got to pick up the grandson at 5.30, before 5.30. Um, I've still got... There's, there's a lot of commentary in the media about inflation. And I, I had a discussion with Matt and Matt, you know, made the point that inflation is not going away. It is going to affect us. But all the all the commentators are saying that inflation might be on a knife edge of um, peaked and on the way down. But I, I know there's different people saying different things. Uh, the Reserve Bank government even said this morning that... Uh, that he felt that we were north of um, of of the peak as well. So um, the cost of living crisis. Uh, I think we we can actually look after our ratepayers at this point, who who um, are struggling. It, it it this is the time. If you're ever going to use your general rate reserve 
to assist your ratepayers, bearing in mind that these are funds that were accumulated because we overrated or didn't deliver on our on what we said we were going to um, do with these rates. Um, then just saving it up for another rainy day, I understand, is a, is a great option, uh, uh, and I've got nothing against that. But um, if there was ever going to be a time we, when you do want to use it for this purpose, then now is probably the time. Um, Gary told us yesterday that CapEx is like delivery this year is like to be 80%. And I know I've tried to get my head around why it's not a big, not a big deal because you potentially will catch up next year. But if you're still delivering work in the next financial year from the previous financial year, then surely that's got to have an effect on the following year's projects as well. Um, we, we've had this discussion several times in this council um, about the bow, bow wave that is created by um, undelivered projects. And um, I'll give you an example, just as a final argument. Five years ago, I set my home mortgage at, at about the time we were um, doing our long-term plan and uh, we were making assumptions on interest rates and uh, the, the rates were still climbing at that stage and I asked our financial um, manager uh, what he thought and no one really knew and, and I thought okay well I'll set it for five years and um, because, because there's just so much uncertainty and then we had five years of the lowest interest rates ever and I, I, I know you can't guarantee it's going to happen again like that but um, so I did have the opportunity to, to reset my mortgage uh, in February, March this year. So I haven't got the worst of it, but I do understand, like Tracy said, that there are people coming off mortgages and they're going to be facing $400 a week or fortnight extra for their costs. Um, the horticulturists benefit, obviously, from the valuation changes, but there's still a lot that are hurting. They're going to hurt from the lost fruit. They're going to hurt from the... The, um, I think we had a, a uh, frost that lost quite a bit of fruit as well earlier in the year. So all in all, I'm recommending that we go for this option for those reasons. Thank you, Grant. Yeah. Murray. I can't support option three. Um, I struggle to support the other ones. I, as I've said before, that over the last two years, our general rate reserve has increased by 1.146 million. Um, and it would be fair and reasonable to uh, use that as being the product of the last two years of the three-year cycle to um, pay down something in this last year. But uh, we have absolutely no idea what's coming, going to hit us next year. Look at all the um, infrastructure that's got to be rebuilt after Cyclone Gabriel and, and the cost pressures and the shortages and whatever that's going to cost. The, as far as inflation peaking, I think that's highly unlikely on the grounds that our fruit bowl of the country and food bowl of the country has just been wiped out. Um, there's going to be all sorts of pressures next year uh, and we're going to find it really hard setting the long-term plan. Um, so deferring stuff and pushing the bow wave down the road um, isn't particularly prudent. It's uh, Nobody wants to pay it this year, but um, that's unfortunately life in the big cruel world. Okay. Councillor Murray Bend. I'm very nervous and I feel totally inadequate on this subject, uh, but I agree with both Rodney and, and Grant. People are hurting and it doesn't matter whether you're a kiwi fruit grower or you're a homeowner. And any form of mortgage, I'm lucky because I don't have one. And But uh, that's something to do with days gone by. And I even think today how on earth people can borrow the hundreds of thousands of dollars that they have to to fund their homes. And we are one of the most expensive places in the country and in the OECD. It's not only our education system that's slipping. And uh, the problem is, um, what is the alternative? And although I agree with them, and uh, I do believe that we can come 
reduce lower. But I want to know what are the implications for the years ahead. And normally we would have on that screen where the budget is and what the implications are and the long-term implications of where we're making the decisions. And personally, sir, I think we should be deferring the debate on this until, in fact, we've got that information, which I'm quite sure wouldn't be that difficult for anybody to produce. You, you've heard the timelines that we have to keep earlier in the meeting, and uh, I'm sure that we'll get two or three months down the track when we're actually making decisions. We will have a lot more of that information before us. But in the meantime, we have to prepare something to consult our community about because we know, as uh, Matt said right at the beginning, there's not a hope in Hades of, of, of reaching the projections um, made in our long-term plan. So, sorry, we can't exactly answer your questions as you might like, but that's the situation we're in. So, Alan. Uh, Mr Chair, I actually strongly feel that we, we basically have probably got sufficient to go out to the public with if that's what we need to start moving it along. They're going to soon tell us. Yep. They're going to tell us what the situation is, and I think there's a lot going to tell us quite hard. Now, this, well, this country, but in particular, the Western Bay has, is just full of people, a demographic that is over 65, over 50. Of those people, it's interesting. Maybe we just need to think a little bit more here. People over 65 still have mortgages. People over 65 no longer own houses, so they're paying rent. People are in those age groups are really struggling. People that are young have gone and got mortgages and got massive payments to make. Um, and the increase is there, along with the food, et cetera, that's, that's hitting us. Fuel, okay, the government have bit the bullet a little bit and continued with their, their reductions for us, subsidy, whatever you like to call it. I just can't actually really see how we can keep doing more to people. We're going to actually create a situation if, if we aren't careful of people moving into um, uh, a situation of having to have housing provided for them if we're not careful. We're not going to realise the income from our rates if people can't pay it. Um, all these things are going to come into it. So how are we going to fund that then? We're going to fund it by more loans and then eventually probably force somebody into foreclosure. Um, you know, our life and our world's about people and we are just seeming to just not consider people at times here. So to me, going out at that rate is, is um, a bit of a problem. And, and okay, I don't like where it might lead in the future, but at least we can deal with that in the future. We can deal with a, a long-term plan and um, maybe we cut our cloth again. But as we are shaping up here, I don't feel that we have all the facts. We were coming and, and we've had some indication of where it might go per household etc we were hoping for the valuations to have been um, available that's not our fault but it's still holding us up from getting more actuals to go out to these people i just feel we should um, pull ourselves up right now and either you take the information we've got and put it out to the public um, or we just try and squeeze another meeting in. Thank you. Rodney, do you want your right to reply? So Murray pointed out that we've added about 1.1, 1.2 million to the rates reserved in the last two years. That's the net figure. Well, actually, inflows to our rate reserve account in the last two years is 2.4 million. So what's happened is that at a time of low inflation, this council has been dipping into this reserve. So last year, the council spent, I think, 700K out of that reserve. And this year, it's spending 600K out of that reserve. So if you're worried about the rainy day fund, I think we've been spending it without the rainy day up until now. You know, over the last two years, $2.4 million has flowed into the rates reserve account. Reserve account. And that, bizarrely, is what we're looking 
to take out of it today for this year. Look, if you're waiting for a rainy day where it's pouring with rain now, well, how much more rain do you want? I mean, it's a crap summer, but a bad, for that reason, a bad image to use. But, um, you know, we have to help our people. Interest rates are continuing to rise. The Reserve Bank is projecting they'll hit 5.5% the official cash rate by the end of the year. That feeds into mortgages. That feeds into real pain. Um, next year, we have the long-term plan. That's the time to really sit down and think about, are we moving too fast with our spending? I don't think anybody would be surprised to hear my view that I think we are. But you know, we're often told, yeah, that should be looked at in the long-term plan. That should be looked at in the long-term plan. We just need to get our people through to that point. Um, and I would implore you to help out people. Um, I've had a good look through the projects list. Um, there are some strange things in there. Apparently, we're funding the Coastal Marine Asset Replacement Project with our Office Building Asset Replacement Fund. So I've got a lot of questions about our projects list, and I'd like the opportunity after this meeting, at some stage, to sit down and go. Some I call them queries because I'm new, so I'm not saying they would all fit. But there are other areas that we could perhaps trim as well, um, and I don't see today as being the end of it. Obviously, you know, others may disagree and I may not get my way. I'm not surprised, yeah, wouldn't be surprised. But I think we need to start off with a, with a good place and then do a bit more work to help our people out. If we go out with a, a rate above inflation, then I don't think we're serving our residents and rate pay as well. Thank you. I'm going to put the motion then. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against? No. Aye. We need to have a show of hands. Those for the motion, please raise your right hand. One, two, three, four. Those against? So I declare the motion lost. Sure. Mr. Mayor. I was going to move option one and explain why, why I'm doing that. That's Second. Yeah, we'll see if there's a seconder. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Okay, thank you. So it's been moved and seconded. Mayor. So I do think option one is the most prudent. I, uh, I'm concerned that we, uh, we're trying to really... Uh, scrape the barrel on, on using reserves and pull levers and we'll end up in a, in a big problem next year. But I'm also thinking that if we go out for consultation with this and our people tell us that's too much, we can be seen to listen to them and bring it down to maybe the current option two or something like that. And that gives us the option. We're never going to get, if you go with option two, we're never going to have, hear people saying, oh, you know what, I want to pay some more rates. That, that's obviously fantasy. But doing it this way, we can be seen to, be, to listen. And I think that's, that's important. This may be the more prudent option, um, but we'll hear what the people think. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Murray Binge. So um, it, it obviously is logical that if we can't have option three, then option one makes some degree of sense. But I still come back to the fact we are the most expensive place along with Auckland to live here. And we as local government have a responsibility to make sure that we have plans to actually open up some of our area to make our housing cheaper. We do have an influence on that. We do need to spend up our decision-making processes because we're far too slow. And uh, I'm not quite sure how we do that, but I just put the challenge out there because we've got experienced staff that are quite capable of achieving it and having more vision as to how in fact we do it. And so our communities won't be able to answer those questions but we do have a responsibility to them to be much better at what we do than what we are at the moment. And so I, with that reservation, I'll support the motion. 
Okay, I think we've exhausted the speakers, so I'll put the motion. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Okay, I declare that passed. Certainly. You got that, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, capital and operational program. I've lost my page again. Mr. Chairman, could I ask why we're doing this one now? We we'll still have to have a proposal, I assume, to take out as part of the consultation. That's my understanding. Is that correct, Matt? So we're presenting the capital and operational program to yourselves because that directly feeds into those projects that we've been looking at. We will be providing an updated one as part of the supporting material that you adopt then go out for consultation so you will see it again then but this is your opportunity if there are questions around specific projects or changes you want to see this is the opportunity to do that because once we go away from this meeting we need to prepare the supporting information and the consultation document based on these projects lists for you to adopt at the next meeting so it's 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 presented now for you to ask questions suggest changes if you so wish um, I do note that there, the resolution there is to uh, approve it for, to inform the development of the supporting information. I think we had a slight amendment to that to recognise um, the wastewater project that Gary mentioned earlier as well. Oh, yes. Yep. The page that's um, been put on your tables. Oh, it was just me, was it? Okay. I'm special, am I? Yeah, if you, I could read it for you. It says that the capital and operational program as per attachment two is approved to inform the development of the annual plan 2023-24 supporting information subject to the following amendments. And they are, A, that project 225632, Tipuki wastewater treatment plant upgrade of uh, almost 8 million change funding from the FINCO loan funding to 100% FINCO loan funded. All right, for one year only. And that project 225635, Rangiuru Business Park share of the contribution towards the cost of the treatment plant upgrade, which is just, just over 7 million change funding from 100% subsidies and grants to 100% FINCO loan funded, one year only. All right. Where is this? It just came out this morning, tabled this morning. Or was it, you got an email about it, um, I think. I'm just about to share my screen, so it won't be two seconds, just bear with me. All right, we'll just wait for Greer. Don, you have a question. You know, let's talk about bell waves. So we, we're down to spend 110,000 on Cemetery Urupa land purchase. We proposed 210, that would have been an extra 100 grand. So we don't do it this year. So we go, oh, great bow wave. We could just buy that and um, do it out of the reserve next year. How does that create the bow wave <laughs> by doing it this year instead of next year? That's a part I'm struggling with here, really, with that line there, here it is here, and the pension and housing project, <laughs> Cemetery Urupa land, 110, 110 instead of 211, saving you that magical between Rodney's um, motion and the mayor's was the 100 grand. And it's all because this bow wave is going to be created, but it was out of reserves. Why can't you just take it out of reserves next year? You still got two and a half million, and we're going to add another half a million with Grant's capital budget project that's not going to go. There's 100 grand's worth of interest was saved already, so it's climbing already before we've even adopted it. But, but don't forget that we might have burnt that 
rate reserve on um, flood damage in the meantime. So it mightn't be there next year. <laughs> oh, there was everyone was arguing about bell waves, and I just go, well, well, it's not coming out of rates next year. Okay, so there's the there's the amended resolution. But easier to follow when you can see it written in front of you than me reading it out. I mean, Gary might want to add more to this, but this is just so it reflects the issues and options paper that you've seen yeah. earlier yeah. Uh, better. And just to let you know, we will be doing a full proof of this document again before it comes over to yourselves as part of the supporting information at the next meeting. Thank you. Murray. <laughs> Oh, but hard to go, go back and find it. But as I recall, the wastewater treatment plant was 8.86 million in the first year, and now we've got 7.95. So um, there was also an existing budget. So this is the the 8.86 was talking about the additional cost, but the total that's in the budget for next year between the additional what's existing is 15 million. So there's, there's two components to it, there's two, two pieces to it. Same situation as the library. Mm. Satisfied? No. He doesn't sound like it. Mark, yes. Councillor Murray Benz, yes. Question, sir. It says 100% FinCo loan funded for one year only. Mr. Ellis. Yeah, and, and there's probably as I Microphone. talked about before microphone um in terms of our commitment with regular business park so the idea is you we fix it at a point in time it funds the first stage or the first year's costs of the upgrade and then the project and that debt transfers to um, entity b so there's some tactics that go with it as well thank you do we have a second up Mayor Daniel, no one's wishing to speak. All right, we move on then. I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carry. Right. Can I move motion recommendation five and six, please? Um, well, yes, you can, but I think we should note that somewhere I was recently in a meeting, it was commented that it perhaps is not... Um, sufficiently clear that it didn't mean that uh, the Deepuki Community Board was going to get $30,000 to fund their community plan. That they could get assistance from that fund of $30,000. So it may not and hopefully would not consume the whole amount. That, that's correct. The Deepuki Community Board requested $50,000 be included for the budget. We currently have a budget already allocated in there for community plans generally of 30,000. What this resolution is saying is that we will be progressing at the Puki uh, community plan alongside the spatial plan work using that existing budget. So we've got up to 30,000. Doesn't mean that we're gonna definitely use all of it only for that one. Yeah. Sorry, um, Councillor Sol. So basically what you're saying Te technically, you're simultaneously doing these things, so one sort of runs with the other. Is that what you're saying? So some of the costs would be absorbed in a spatial plan as opposed to the community plan. Yes, that's correct. So, uh, for the microphone, sorry that I'm being much online anymore. <laughs> 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 so, it's potentially for the live stream. Yeah, that's right. Apologies. So um, with the concurrent processes, there's going to be um, pieces of work that will be done that will inform both the spatial plan and the community plan, we imagine. So essentially, the community board will, if we're working together, will be able to benefit from some of the work that's done through the spatial plan, um, which means potentially not needing to dip into the community plan for the same type of work that you ordinarily might do. Thank you. Councillor Crawford. Um, 
Yeah, it was a support Jang is also the MAC2 community board is up for reviewing their community plan also. So can they fit into that same I mean you're doing a special plan? Um, Chair so the scope of the the scope of the Tupuki spatial plan doesn't extend to Maki Two. Um, it may very well be that Maki Two Community Board um, choose to make a submission to the annual plan to that effect. Um, but equally, you the elected members have heard from Luke and Emily talking about the first phase of engagement, um, the first phase of community-led conversations that we're looking to progress throughout the district once we've put this annual plan to bed. That will be again a really useful, a really useful opportunity for um, any community board wishing to, to gather intelligence around um, intelligence from their community to inform a, a community plan review. So I don't necessarily think that um, I necessarily think that every community that community boards who would like to review the community plan necessarily have to have their own ring fenced budget at the moment to do that. They will be able to leverage off processes that we are looking to we are looking to implement with key community stakeholders, community boards included, um, to broker community conversations across the district to inform LTP, to inform um, district plan review community plans, spatial planning processes, so a whole lot of processes. One conversation for many processes. It was a very long-winded explanation. Sorry, Councillor. That's, that's good. Okay, thank you. So the Mayor has moved five and six. Do I have a seconder? Um, we're right. Can someone help me? Yeah, yeah, right at the beginning it was. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Don't see any rush to speak, so I'll put the motions. All in favour, please say aye. Against? Carry. It's a bit of a marathon, I'm sorry, but thank you all for your participation. I should acknowledge that there's no information for a seat. And a question before we close. Um, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure where, I don't want to prolong the meeting, but I'm not sure where we're up to with the 1,000 page spreadsheet for $132 million on the end of the agenda. We haven't actually approved that. Are we, and there's, no, there's no motion attached to that, or am I wrong? I mean, we got that one week ago, either, I can't remember, either very late at night or early in the morning before the, the workshop. I've got a heap of queries on it. I don't want to prolong the meeting with those, particularly since some of them are about my learning as much as about options and for the council. Um, so how do we, have we approved that capital plan, 132 million without even talking about it? Can I? That, that was resolution four. That you passed yeah, with, that's with, what I was thinking. With the mm. amendments. Um, but if you've got any comments, we could probably take them offline if you flick us an email and then maybe we could have a chat um, in the next week or so. Um, can you direct those queries through to the governance services inbox and we will direct them from there? Sorry, Matt. Yeah. Um, the only problem with that is yeah. that I then I have Sorry, to write a big, long memo well enough. and I'd really rather just sit down and work with somebody. And if there's anything comes out of that, then I can put that into a memo, right? I mean, it, literally, there are notes on the spreadsheet. I, you know, I'm not going to have time to do hours and hours of turning that into a formal memo to send formally through the governance services. Email, I just fine. Yeah, I just need to clarify one thing I should have done before when the mayor um, moved items um, five and six. Um, apparently, there's a mistake in your agenda, and so I'll just read the number six, which is that it says that the committee, that is this committee, 
requests that the CEO direct staff to prepare a consultation document and supporting information for the annual plan 2023-24 that reflects the matters and issues raised in this meeting. So as long as you understand that clearly, that that's what was moved and seconded. I'm sure, James. <laughs> I, I can recall that vaguely, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> Okay, so thank you all very much, um, councillors and staff.